Good morning and welcome to Health Talk, sponsored by Mon General Hospital. This program is designed to provide education on vital health topics to help you take charge of your health. You'll also be introduced to Mon General's committed physicians, allied healthcare professionals, and quality programs and services. And now, here are your Health Talk hosts, Kay Murray and Jim Stallings. ADHD. That's an acronym we hear a lot about, at least for the past several years. What is it? Has your child been diagnosed with ADHD? Or do you think your child has ADHD? We're going to find out all about it today with Dr. Nelanie Casey with Cardinal Pediatrics and on staff at Mon General Hospital here on Health Talk. I'm Jim Stallings along with Kay Murray. Good morning, Kay. Good morning, Jim. Dr. Casey, welcome back to the program. Thank you. Uh, let's talk about ADHD. ADHD, attention deficit what hyperactivity disorder okay Mm -hmm. so it is 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 that the definition hyperactivity well i guess we'd all be defined then because i think all of us are a little hyper but truly adhd is people throw it around all the time like you know i want to call each and every one of my children adhd when they don't listen to me and and it the term gets thrown around a lot but truly it's a neurological disease it's a process where a child can't focus and can't pay attention and they're fidgety, and they are not like the rest of the kids in the classroom. When we were children, they didn't call it that, did they? No, they called us. They called it all of look us. Like I'm High including strung. myself. No, yeah, they called kids like that bad kids. They were just the bad kids, and okay. they, you know, they were always segregated. Nobody wanted to talk to them, and it hasn't changed a whole lot. And it seems like we're diagnosing it quite a bit today. Uh, what have we found out from 20 years ago than what we know today? Well, we know that it's not, a lot of times these kids will come in with symptoms of ADHD, which is, I mean, they can't focus, they're talking constantly, they're up in other people's faces, they can't stay in their seat, they don't listen, they can't stay on task. And we know now that it's not that kid's fault, that, you know, all the punishment in the world, all the incentives in the world, that child is not going to be able to behave the way the rest of the other children are behaving. I guess I, that was identified just as being restless and um, have a lot of energy back in my day. I mean, it was, are we over-diagnosing this? I, yes and no. I think, um, like I said, at any given moment, I'm willing to look at each and every child that I've given birth to and say, you have ADHD, you are not listening to me. But I'm being facetious, of course. It, truly, if a parent comes in and and says give me that magic pill for my child because they won't listen and because they're they're hyper and, and they don't they don't do their homework. Well, you know what? That kid probably may or may not have ADHD, but we have objective ways now of of interviewing children and p- teachers and parents and and finding out if these children truly meet a very strict criteria. I've always heard that uh, the ADHD children can be very creative. Do you find that to be true? They have an over-imagination. Uh, do they excel or do they not excel in school? They do not excel in school. Most, ever. N- well, it's hard to say ever. I think if you have a child that has a very high IQ, they may be able to compensate for their inability to focus as long as the next child that maybe has a, a less an average IQ. But at some point, that child is going to need to focus, and all the IQ in the world is not going to help when that child needs to sit and learn algebra or trigonometry or something where it, that really involves a lot of they're, focus. They wonder. Is that it? Their they, mind yes, wonders? And, I mean, kids will say all kind of, kinds of things. They'll say, uh, Dr. Nelani, uh, when I'm at school, I hear the person behind me if they drop a pencil. You know, they, they're, hyper foc- uh, they're hyper-vigilant. They can hear things. They're easily distractible. You said they can't stay on task. So what's going through their mind through the course of a day? Well, I think these kids... I, one of the things that bothers me so much about kids with ADHD is they get a really bad rap. All day long, they hear, Jim, sit in your seat. Jim, quit touching people. Jim, stop talking out loud. You know, why can't you be like your brother? Why, you know, and then it's at home. Can't you sit still to eat dinner? And it goes on and on and on. So they, what goes through their head is, I need to behave. I need to focus. I need to focus. And then they can't do it. I need to focus, and they'll, they'll sit there. And one of the things I do in the office when the parents are there with a really fidgety hyper kid, I'll say, now sit right here. Sit right here and don't move. They absolutely cannot do it. Oh, my goodness. I had ADHD. I think you still <laughs> did. In fifth grade. Honestly, I was going through some old report cards. 
And the teacher's comments were, uh, Jim finishes his work too quickly. Oh Jim, my gosh. Jim talks too much. Yep. Uh, and it, the way that she describes it is, I'm not focusing on the work at hand, or if I get something, I just want to get it done and do it as quickly as possible. I mean, Whether it's right or wrong. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, but some of the things you said, maybe it's just because you were saying Jim this, Jim that. See, and, uh, it all brought, I brought it back. Didn't yeah, it? Yep. you did. I did. What but, about social skills? They absolutely, most children that have pretty significant cases of ADHD lack appropriate social skills. You'll find children with ADHD gravitate to younger kids that maybe, and children in their own peer group, they can't, they can't relate to because they can't focus enough to have a conversation, a an interactive conversation and because and children then and therefore don't want to play with them especially when they're up in your face and they're they're touching you and they're everywhere and other kids don't want to play with them and so these kids are lonely and they they feel bad and they feel lonely most of the time when I'm evaluating a school age child for ADHD and I say to the child are you happy do you like school do you feel like you're a good kid they get teary and they they don't 304-296-0041 is our telephone number. See, right there I had a question, and I couldn't focus See? and complete the question. <laughs> uh, to you. I know what it is. That um, might be dementia, though. Cor- yeah, yeah, it could be. <laughs> Whoops. Um, pediatricians are always searching for the why, and so do we know that children develop this? Is it innate or environmental? Well, it's innate. Like when you said, you know what, I think I had ADHD in the fifth grade. You, I mean, you're born with ADHD. It's not something that you acquire. Um so it's not how you're brought up or the family life or the home or anything not, like not that? Not really. Well, you know what? That has a, a big part in, in shaping and structuring a child with ADHD, parenting and structure. But truly, these kids are born with it. And if you... Born with what? Born I mean, with, is it something in their brain that just didn't formalize really? Yeah, or? it's like the, the very, very front of the brain. It just didn't quite develop the way that most people brains develop and it's understimulated that's why they say well why would you give a kid with adhd a stimulant medication why would you give them ritalin because that's you know but i hate that name i mean i think it has a bad rap it it does because it's a great drug um for kids with adhd because it helps them it's not a magic pill it doesn't make their parents nicer their teachers nicer it doesn't make them smarter it doesn't make them clean their room what it does is it allows them a few seconds maybe more to focus so that maybe they can stay on task so they get the next word in the sentence so they're able to remember spelling words or where they put their backpack and and it's it's a good drug if used wisely and counseling go in with this oh yeah I mean if you can find counseling I think it's what do you mean if you can find it I think that doing um Teaching a parent to parent a child with ADHD. Okay. Counseling for family for and family the child. family and the okay. child, yes, both. Um, is very di- it's hard to find parenting classes here, but it, with the school guidance counselor, with pediatricians, with um, we at Cardinal, we have a PhD now, um, Dr. Uh, Tracy Barry Harris, and she'll do some of that too, but it, these, these people are overwhelmed. But if you, you can get on the Internet and read about um, ways to parent an ADHD child, and that's a huge part of it. You know, structure, offering that child structure really helps them thrive. But how do you know the difference? I, I hate to keep pushing this from just a child that's overactive and uh, gets overexcited about certain things, then saying, okay, this is a child that has ADHD. Can you see the difference between those children? I, most of the time, I think. Being in pediatrics for 15 years and being the mother of four, I can usually see it, but okay. that's not objective enough for me or anybody else. The thing is, is most people come to me and the first chief complaint is, you know what, my, my kid's not doing well in school. And that's what they but say. But that can go with a lot of kids. Right. And so the first thing I do is say, okay, well, can he see? You know, I know it's a ridiculous question, but if he can't see, then obviously he's not going to see the board, et cetera. Can he hear? Um, and so that being, and then is he is he focusing is he dyslexic what what's his IQ so I have all these questions about the child that's not doing well in school why isn't he doing well in school is he just sitting there and things are going over his head or is he busy chit-chatting and talking and looking at the clock and you know doing another thing so at that point if I even suspect that they have ADHD then we send them off to um a to do some neurological testing or some neuropsych testing. What do you do with those tests? Um, and then testing. Well, like first they'll do an IQ test. Can this child actually reason and think? Is this child 
maybe just have a lower IQ and that's why they can't pay attention. Or maybe the child has a super high IQ and he's bored, you know. But these tests kind of tease out that and so you know so you eliminate a lot before you actually diagnose it. right right even though if you have an inkling it's it the proper thing to do is get the neuropsych testing why are we always referring to the uh the male gender or the boys well because most <laughs> boys tend to be a little more noticeable with adhd so girls not that they don't but girls tend to be the more quiet ADD, not necessarily so hyperactive. Maybe the child that just kind of sits in class and gets lost and come the end of the year, they really don't know how to read or they, you know, they, they're, they're just quietly sitting there off in Tahiti in their head, but they're not being obnoxious and they're not calling attention to themselves. But one of the biggest things is these kids can't do what other kids do in preschool, in kindergarten, in first grade. They can't sit at circle time. They can't sit and listen to a story. They've got to be up and moving. And that's where the parents get the notes coming home saying, you know. So you're going to start recognizing this when children are in kindergarten or earlier? Well, it used to be first grade was the big deal because, okay. like, you know, before kindergarten used to be, like, nap and snack and then go home. But now kindergarten's the new first grade. It's all day long. These kids are coming out expecting to be able to read. And then preschool is, like, the new kindergarten because now there's this all-day free preschool for kids that are four. So we're picking these things up much earlier. Teachers are. You know, it was perfectly fine to keep your child at home until the first grade. And so that was when the child got noticed because maybe the parents didn't notice that. But now p teachers are picking it up at three and four. Dr. Nelanie Casey is our guest this morning here on Health Talk, brought to you by Mon General Hospital. And if you have a question about ADHD, call us at 304-296-0041. This is Mon General's Health Talk, providing the information you need to take charge of your health. Call us now with your health-related questions at 304-296-0041. Dr. Nelanie Casey is a pediatrician, and she's with Cardinal Pediatrics and on staff at Mon General Hospital. Mon General brings you Health Talk every Thursday morning at this time. We are talking about ADHD, and you mentioned one of the treatments is Ritalin, and I think Perhaps Kay and I have heard the bad rap about Ritalin that it is a magic pill, that if a kid shows a little bit of hyperactivity, boom, put them on Ritalin. And it seemed like a majority of our children in America these days are on Ritalin, and we have an over-medicated society. Yeah, I guess you could say that. But there, there are so many different aspects of treatment. The first thing is, you know— uh, the first thing is just bringing them in. Bring them in to, the, to us, the pediatrician. Let us let us know. And now is the time to do it because it's the beginning of school. It's the first six weeks, I think. Right? Is that right? Yeah. First six weeks of school. And you know, she's talking is, to her daughter. Yeah. She brought yeah. us. Yeah. <laughs> Eliza uh, missed the bus today, Eliza so missed Eliza's the... sitting here with yeah. me, yeah. looking at me, shaking her head. Were so, you focused you know. on something else? Is that? What it is? <laughs> Are you too <terrified? laughs> She's thinking, why am I here? Why am I here? But no. So you know, you bring them in. This is a time where the first report card come out all the little notes are coming home so get them in and let's start the process once we've diagnosed ADHD or ADD there are many different aspects of treatment the first is behavioral you have to say that this is the child that needs to go to bed needs to get good sleep and you've you're talking about a hyper kid that has a hard time winding down so being very strict about sleep schedules not giving this child caffeine not not doing things that stress the child and so that's the first thing then the parenting and the in, in working with the teacher and working with the principal uh, as a in, a in a team approach, maybe even getting an IEP, which is an individual um, plan for each child to help them learn. Preferential seating, put that child in the front. Don't put a lot of distraction. And then stimulant medication is another option. Ritalin, Adderall, Concerta, and and different forms of these stimulant medications actually stimulate the part of the brain that is not working correctly and, and helps these kids focus. And again, like I said, it's not a magic pill, but it really makes a huge difference in a child that has ADHD. I'm so glad to hear you talk about the different things you can do before you go with the medication. It's not just bringing your child in and bam, you put them on uh, Ritalin or whatever other medication you feel would be appropriate. But you try different options first. And uh, that could be the counseling. That could be what they're eating, uh, how they're behaving with their parents, how the parents behaving right. with them. All of that emotion that comes into play before you start medications. Right, and, and many times... 
you have to talk a parent out of medication or you have to talk sometimes you have to talk them into the medication people have all different ideas and of course the internet offers us lots of both false and true information aren't we all trying to stimulate our brain a little bit with our morning coffee our caffeine our five-hour energy our energy drinks throughout whole life it seems we're always trying to stimulate our brain more than it's capable of on its own (laughs) isn't it yeah i think you're right i mean if you take a child that doesn't have adhd just your average college student that wants to study for finals and they they take their brother's Adderall. Yeah, you know what? They're going to focus more. They're going to be more alert, more aware, more focused. So it's not and and but that's not what it's for. And and, and it will help just anybody focus a little bit. But truly the child with ADHD needs the medication. So and so you wonder, well, if you can't get your day started unless you've had four cups of coffee, you might have ADHD because that also, the caffeine, that stimulant, will focus you. And kids that go untreated that have ADHD will find ways to focus, whether they're choosing artificial stimulants. We've got a huge problem with methamphetamine, um, any other kind of stimulants. Or they'll, they'll drink, they'll, do, they'll use illegal means to make themselves feel better. So if the choice is Ritalin or Adderall or, or Concerta or stimulant medication versus illegal drugs, that sort of thing. And the one part about ADHD we haven't talked about is the impulsiveness. These kids do things without thinking. These are the kids that are always getting hurt. This is the kid that you look up and all of a sudden they're hanging off the roof and just doing ridiculous things. Um, they're the kid that's more likely to drive drunk or hop in a car with a drunk driver or hey, take this pill, okay, and then they do it, and they think, well, and then later they do have remorse. Later you'll say, well, why did you do that? Why did you think that was a good idea? I don't know. I don't know why I did it. That's always the response. Mm -hmm. I just don't know. Yeah, and the pill, you know, the stimulant medication, it's not going to keep them off drugs. It's not going to make them not drink, but it will give them a little bit longer to think about maybe the consequences of an action. What about effects of medication? What about what? What about the effect of some of the medication that uh, the children are taking? Essentially, you know, the stimulant medications will suppress appetite. So the child may not want to eat as much and may lose weight and may not grow. We keep we watch that very carefully. Also, it can cause um, high blood pressure if it's a stimulant medication. Um, Some kids will get headaches. Some kids will get nausea. Most people tolerate a very low dose of the medication very well. Um, And then there are other medications that aren't stimulant medications like stratera and tunev and they just work on different parts of the brain to help children focus and we don't know quite as much about those and we don't have the same experience with those as the stimulant meds when do you take children off these medications that's a good question most children if you can get when they're immature uh, preschool kindergarten first grade they're just i mean they cannot control themselves and if you can get them at that point on a good medication, get them to be able to sit in circle time, learn the basics, learn appropriate behavior because of the parenting and and the teaching. Then later on, they lose some of that. They know what's inappropriate and what's appropriate, and they can try to stop the medication. Most kids will stop it themselves and just say, hey, I don't want to take this anymore. And if they have learned the skills necessary to succeed in school and succeed in life, then they don't need it. We are going to take our final break of the Health Talk program today and be back with Dr. Nelanie Casey on WAJR right after this. The doctors, the latest news and procedures. Your local health connection is Mon General's Health Talk. If you'd like to be on the show, call 304-296-0041. If you suspect your child has ADHD, uh, based on the reasons we've talked about on the program today, Dr. Nelanie Casey, uh, should we make an appointment with you, just the the parent and you, or parent and child, or how's it working? The the parent should come in with their child, just to their their pediatrician, and and that's that's the first step. And where are your locations at Cardinal Pediatrics? Well, we have one in Cheat Lake, and we have one at Suncrest Town Center. And uh, we are opening a another Cardinal in uh, Clarksburg, Jerry Dove, Jerry Dove Drive, right? Mm-hmm. Is, that Bridgeport? Oh, yeah. is that Bridgeport or Clarksburg? Well, it's it's uh, where the FBI Center is, and the BW3 yep. so, is technically Bridgeport, right, I think. Right, and that should be up and running soon. So any of those locations, we'd be glad to see you. Your telephone number? Is 599-8000, area Do- code 304. Dr. Nelanie Casey, our guest on Health Talk, brought to you by Mon General Hospital on the voice of Morgantown, W-A-J-R.